Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. My name is Noah Arwez. I'm a designer at Adafruit, and joining me every week is my brother Pedro. Good morning, everybody. I'm Pedro's creative tech here at Adafruit, and every week we're here to share 3D projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. Yep, that's right. This is where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make fiery projects that are inspirational. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. We are hanging out in the Discord chat room. Shout out to everybody in the Discord chat room hanging out with this morning. If you'd like to join in, you go to discord.gg slash Adafruit. We're going to uh, walk through the intros and we'll get jumping in, uh, right into um, the project. Uh, real quick, just want to mention that there is a newsletter that's focused on the products from Adafruit added every week. So this is a weekly based uh, newsletter. So if you'd like to check it out, go to adafruit.com slash newsletter. We also have some daily newsletter. These are more um, stories and um, blog posts that you might have missed. Um, it's, you can check those out at adafruitdaily.com. There's lots of different categories that you can select. Um, one of our favorite ones is, of course, 3D printing and Python on hardware. So check those out, adafruitdaily.com. You can subscribe to those topics of interest. Circuit Python meetings happen every Monday at 2 p.m. We invite everyone in the community to come in and, and listen in or join in. Uh, you can do so by um, hitting up the Discord server, it happens. Uh, every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. And you can, of course, check out the podcast. Um, it's up in different podcast um, apps, and there's a playlist on YouTube as well. Adafruit is open and shipping. If you are interested in all the different procedures that Adafruit's taking, the measurements to make sure everything is safe as we are uh, ramping up everything, you can go to adafruit.com slash open safely. And there's some details there that uh, will make you feel safe. I think that is the intro. Am I missing anything? Remind everybody to subscribe to Adabox. Yeah. Next one is coming up, hard and strong. We got a lot of projects that are in the works, so it will be ready to go once. Adabox, Adabox uh, what is it, 15? 16? 16. 17, Once 18, 19. that ships. The newest. Definitely sign up to get notified. If there are any available spots open, you can subscribe to Adabox at adafruit.com slash Adabox. Yeah, there's this dynamic uh, kind of clock, clock time down, countdown. Mm -hmm. um, sweet. Yeah, it is Adabox 16. They're open, and they will start shipping in October. Ooh. Super cool. Yes. Excellent. All right, cool. let's go ahead and jump into this week's awesome prop-inspired project for the upcoming yes. Halloween season. This Kicking it, it off with this cool LED flaming torch. Yes, I need, I'm feeling the heat, Pedro. It's, this morning's been it's tough. It's perfect for all of the uh, heat out here. Nice, cool you off. Yeah, actually cool you off, right? <laughs> yeah, so huge shout out to Nick Daimlo. He does some awesome designs, and he is working on a, or he released, rather, a medieval torch with the Gemma M0 and the NeoPixel ring. Uh, it uses a bigger fan, so I figured, oh, I'd like to remix that for the smaller fan. We uh, have this little 5-volt DC fan that we've been using in, in various projects, actually the fume extractor project, and I figured, hey, let's kind of make it smaller and uh, fit um, the, the NeoPixel jewel in the front here. So let's take a look at it in the overhead so we can look at this, this lovely prop. So yeah, again, huge shout out to Nick Daimlo. I recreated all of this in Fusion 360, so it's kind of make it parametric so that we can uh, kind of play around with different sizes. But up here is the 7 NeoPixel Jewel, and that's just lit up there, and it's kind of secured to these, this little bracket. And the bracket has uh, little uh, cutout pieces of fabric, uh, which is made out of silk. So we got this pack of kind of uh, dancing <laughs> scarves, and uh, they're typically like this. We got like a pack of 20 of them, this is this red, and it's very, very transparent, which adds to the effect a lot. And it's got like kind of this metal sheen as well. So uh, really, really like this stuff. We have it linked in the learn guide if you want to pick this stuff up. It comes in different colors. Uh, but we found out some interesting ways to work with it and how not to work with it. So you can see here all the different cut-ups. We actually have a little scotch tape, and we, uh, we made a template for the, for the flame shapes. And we basically... Um, put it on here and use the double-sided tape to kind of keep the edges from, um, from kind of fraying and also it keeps the template on, uh, on the material. So that's cool. We'll, we'll talk more about, uh, about that um, as we get to the assembly. 
Um, but yeah, let's talk. <laughs> I'm just jumping on with this. Uh, let's talk a little bit more of the electronics. So the Gemma M0 is the brains of the uh, of the project, and it is mounted cleverly inside another bracket that's mounted uh, below the fan. So it's positioned in a spot where uh, there's still airflow, and that's why uh, this bottom cage has all these openings here, kind of these fingers. Uh, it allows the airflow to come in. So you can kind of see the wiring in there. And then I have the slide switch right there hidden in there. So this is what it looks like with it off. Um, really, really nice. This is actually orange and a red um, uh, silk. So it has that kind of variant color. So that's neat. Um, the battery, well, let's talk about the power. So this little guy right here, that little, the little board right there, that is the five volt mini boost. And what that lets you do is it lets you get uh, one amp five volts out of it. Uh, so you can power that five volt fan uh, through the mini boost and get a clean one amp of power. So you can power multiple things with it. And then for the battery, uh, the battery is actually hidden inside the handle. Um, it's a 2200 milliamp lipo battery, so it's, it's, it's a little bit more durable than the soft LiPoly batteries. Um, and it's uh, rechargeable, uh, you can take it out and recharge it. Um, but we don't have a recharging circuit in here because the Gemma is a pretty low cost board, doesn't quite have a, a charger. But um, you can take it, you can disconnect it easily because we have a slide, a slide switch JC adapter here. So, uh, so that's really nice. Yeah. So uh, the design is put up in multiple pieces. So we have uh, the cage, which is two parts. And then there's uh, two more brackets here, one for the Jewel, one for the Gemma. And then uh, down here we have kind of this collar, that's where the battery's kind of hiding. And also down here, it could hide here if you wanted to as well. And they all kind of screw together. I really like using coils. So this is kind of the pommel. It's, uh, you can take that out. And then this comes out as well. This is where the battery is. So the battery is kind of housed in there. I got this little Ninja Flex clip that you can print out. Or you could just kind of tape it in there. Um, so. That's cool. Um, uh, I really like using coils because you can make it so uh, it's an easy disassembly. You don't have to glue anything. Just kind of take it apart if you need to. So here's the battery. The 2200 milliamp is a sand. And uh, now we have this little desktop uh, uh, little cage here. So yeah, I think we could jump into the learn guide and kind of walk through the assembly and other little bits like that. Like how, because this is a module, you can turn the, uh, make this into something like a cosplay prop for like a character that has like, I don't know, say flames as hands. Yeah, some shoulder <laughs> bells or something. Some sort of, I don't know, luminaire type character from Beauty and the Beast. Oh, that's right, that would be cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I was thinking like, you can control the fan as well with the Gemma if you wanted to. If you wanted to do like a show display, like mm -hmm. instead of using like uh, fireworks, <laughs> you could kind of have yeah. these various flames coming up. So lots of different kind of fun things there. So let's jump into the learning guide and see what we got cooking here. Um, so the first page, it's overview. It's going to walk through all the different parts that we used. Not too many, really. It's the Gemma, the NeoPixel Jewel, uh, blah, blah, blah. the NeoPixel Jewel, <laughs> the slide switch, and that new uh, 5 volt mini boost. OK, so I got those listed there. Um, most of the stuff is in stock, which is really cool. Well, the batteries out of stock. You can sign up to be notified when they are in stock. Working hard to get those back in stock. There's a couple of different things like the JST connectors just to make the assembly a little bit easier. You don't need them. You can kind of wire up the whole circuit and then th kind of mount everything. But I like using JST cables and connectors because it makes it easy to disconnect. So uh, I have those linked there. Cool. Um, yeah, let's quick, quick look at the circuit diagram. It just shows you how I have uh, three connections are coming out of the Jewel into the Gemma. Um, there's, uh, there's some nice pins here that you can use. and They have big solder pads. They're, they're supposed, they could be sewed, but I like soldering to them because it's a big pad and you can have multiple wires like this ground here soldered to it. Um, the 5 volt fan is wired into the 5 volt pin and the ground pin coming out of the mini 5 volt boost. That one right there. And the boost itself is connected to the Gemma via the, uh, the V out and a ground pin. So not too many pins there for, uh, for that one. And of course, everything's laid out here um, for accessibility purposes. You kind of search through that. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it could be powered through USB if you'd like. If you want to have this plugged into a wall or a USB battery bank, you totally do that. The Gemma will do it just fine. Um, but yeah, I'm just using this uh, slide switch JST adapter. Um, it's just a 
two uh, JST connectors, two pin JST connectors. It just allows you to uh, cut power from the battery to the Gemma. So the 3D printing parts are surprisingly no supports for, for any of this. So it's really nice. Um, yeah, the, the, the coils are all nice and, 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 and designed for tolerances so you can get nice tight fittings on them. Um, yeah, so I have the STLs laid out here. They're up on Thingiverse, Prusa printers, and I think Colts 3D uh, is going to share it too. Uh, and then I have the Fusion 360 share link, which is uh, a, a way to download like the original source file uh, and, and, and lots of different formats. So if you have a different CAD package and you want to uh, remix it or, or reuse some of the parts, um, you can open up in various CAD packages, which is nice. This little uh, CAD animation, um, I actually have it here. Let me see if that still works. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. So this is a little CAD animation I put together just to show how the fan is kind of like the, what would you call it? It's like the, the heart of the project, it really is. And everything is kind of mounted around it. So the cage and, and, and the, the little brackets are all kind of based on fitting that five volt fan. And this fan is kind of a common um, mounting hole, so different fans would probably work with it. But I tend to like this fan because it has the most airflow that I've found. So that's just a nice little animation to show you how it's kind of a, a circuit sandwich. Um, with the fan in the middle. Interesting way to kind of mount this. This is super different. So back over here. Again, uh, I printed everything with PLA, no supports uh, on my Ultimaker, but I'm sure they'll work on other printers. Um, I don't think the bed needs to be any bigger than like 150. So like our little small printer, the, uh, the Flashforge Inventor 2, should fit all the parts just fine. I think the tallest Z is like maybe 150 millimeters. Um, but yeah, it should fit on most printers. Um, I got some 3D models of the Gemma board, which I put together with Eagle CAD and Fusion. And uh, I've, I thought I had done this before, but it's, it's, it's a bit of an older, like a, maybe two years ago the Gemma came out, or three years or whatever. But anyway, I got a new 3D model of it. It's up on GitHub, and I got the link there for you. Uh, the way the cage is made is it's split into two uh, pieces that snap fit together and so they um, they have these little fingers and these little slots underneath the, the top part and you basically just connect them together and if you apply a little bit of pressure uh, to the fingers uh, they'll flex slightly so that they can pop that into uh, you can pop those nubs into the little uh, grooves that are along the slots um, and then if you want to uh, take it apart you just kind of uh, apply a light pressure uh, to the fingers as it has that little bit of flex and then you can pull out uh, the top cover. I haven't quite done anything like that yet so it was really jazzed about how well it worked. Um, I wasn't really sure if it was going to flex well or not but it works out really well. Uh, if you were to use something like PETG, PETG filament, it would flex even better and be even more uh, strong, more durable. Um, so I got lucky, didn't end up breaking those fingers which is nice. They're pretty hefty and thick, um, so I think um, it'll print out pretty good and uh, withstand a, uh, a little bit of pressure to open and close several, maybe hundreds of times. I don't know, don't quote me on that. <laughs> but uh, that's kind of the 3D printed parts in a nutshell. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, kind of moving into the code parts. Uh, it's all done in CircuitPython. It's really easy to kind of write some quick animations or just have them turn on the, the, the NeoPixels. Uh, so this page here just walks you through um, updating CircuitPython on your Gemma board. So this is particular, it's a mirrored page actually from the Gemma M0 Learn Guide. Pretty similar to the CircuitPython libraries, it's a thorough walkthrough of installing the library bundle. How do you work with it? What is it all about? It's a nice walkthrough on uh, getting that library bundle. In the code page, it shows exactly what you need uh, to run the code. I got three libraries here. Um, the, the Gemma has an onboard LED. It's, uh, it's a dot star LED. So it requires the dot star library. So that's why it's in here. Um, I'm using the dot star to just light up the bottom since the, the Gemma is mounted in the bottom um, of the cage. It, it kind of looks like it's um, that blue light of a fire, the bottom of the fire, it's blue. But you can change the color. Also using the pixel 
uh, the PyPixel buff library, which speeds up the NeoPixel um, animations if you use any. And then, of course, just the NeoPixel um, library itself. Yeah, and this is what a screenshot looks like of the, the CircuitPy drive. What's really nice about CircuitPython boards is you're plugging them with the USB on any computer, most computers, and it just shows up like a USB drive. So you can uh, get all your libraries and code, access them on just about any computer, even mobile phones, which is kind of neat. Yeah. Um, there's a little paragraph here about the, the Moo Python editor. That's what we tend to use. It's a nice lightweight editor for editing Python. And then this just walks you through uh, uploading the code and make sure you use a, a good USB cable with the, with the, the data. So that tends to be a problem with folks when they use their USB cable and their CircuitPython board doesn't work. It's normal, like 90% of the time it's the cable. <laughs> right. Really, really light code here. Um, we're just turning on the dot star and uh, setting up the NeoPixels on D2. There's seven of them. Um, I put together a little uh, for loop here just saying like, hey, I want these pixels to be red. And I want my first pixel to be blue. So that's how I set that up. Pretty simple and easy. Yeah. OK, that's kind of the, the main CircuitPython part. The beauty of it is that it is really, really easy. Even, even a designer like me can write a little bit of baby code. <laughs> cool. Let's chat about the flame then, as this was, uh, I got to say, it was like the most difficult part about this project was getting the freaking flame right. <laughs> it really was kind of hard. Uh, so here is that uh, a photo of kind of the parts I'm using some scotch tape and this pack of dance scarves that we got on Amazon. Uh, we, Pedro, you put together the template for the flame. Yeah, so one of the things that we were such in a search for was what type of material is actually used for these because there's a bunch of different uh, products that have this exact same like type of material, but of course they don't sell that as a separate add-on or a replacement part. Uh, people who make these, they don't post links to anything that they've you know tested out. They probably just grabbed it, you know, um, like in store. So there's no link to actually post. So okay. uh, we found that it was our duty to figure out what material was that mm -hmm. acted the best and link it to, uh, so you can you know recreate this because oh what 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 an interesting concept to have mm. links that you could recreate everything with. So we're using these dance scarves is what they ended up uh, being labeled under as. Yeah. So these are for like kids. Uh, it's a really cool little toy that, labeled as a toy right. uh, that uh, will not cause any suffocation or anything like that for like younger oh, kids. So it's this very light. Um, like low thread count for this type of uh, yeah. silk type of scarf. And one of the things that we really like about it is when they actually combine together uh, with the different colors, they actually create that smoky, darker effect that you usually get with fire where it creates that um, sort of like, a, like the smoke. So we combine two colors. It comes in a pack of, uh, I forget how many, but there's a bunch of different colors. So you can create your own differently uh, stylized uh, sort of flames, so you can make a purple flame with green or something like that. Here we're using orange and red, and when they combine, like the edges here, uh, sort of make it like a darker color like the smoke that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. So I tried cutting this in a variety of different shapes and ways. Uh, so this is a little bit more complex, uh, where it has all these little, um, little, what are they called, little wavy type things for the flame, and that ended up not being the best. Uh, the, the design that ended up working the uh, most realistic was just a simple little triangle design. Uh, yeah, it's, it's like this. We don't have the template here. It's in the other room, but you can see the photo here. It, it, it's, it's like a petal or a brush or something. Yeah, yeah it's a, a bit, there's a bit of curvature there. Yeah, so one of the things we were trying to copy was some of the existing uh, like sort of fake flame ones like this one here. Yeah, so we found this on Amazon and we figured, look, we're having trouble with this flame. It's not quite moving right, so we figured we'd buy an actual one and see how they got it going. Mm -hmm. So um, the way they're doing it is uh, it's sort of like layered on top of each other. So you have these two different pieces that overlap and it has all these uh, different designs. I went ahead and just took a picture of it, traced it out inside of Photoshop to create the vector files for this. And this did not work with the smaller, or yes. our version of the fan. Uh, so like I was saying before, we just cut out a simple little uh, triangle until we found a shape that made it the most realistic. And that is what is linked here. You can grab the SVG file if you want to scale that up or add some different uh, variations in it just to test out what the airflow and how yes. that moves in the air. You can test that out and get the SVG for that and modify that. Uh, so you can print that out, cut it out, and we're just using scotch tape 
to uh, uh, adhere this to the uh, scarf. One of the tips that you want to do is to avoid taping it or cutting around where there is like little fold marks like this here. Yeah, let me distort. preface this with the material is fragile. It can easily be punctured. It can easily be creased. And those creases and things will affect your flame. Yeah. Uh, as we were cutting it up and doing different shapes, we ran into that. I kept finding edges that were frayed and... Mm -hmm. and, and you can kind of just be careful. I got this little warning here. Handle it gently. Mm -hmm. It's easily damaged and can't be fixed. So avoid stretching it, pinching it, or creasing the fabric. Well, one of there. the things that I tried to remedy that was by using one of those foam cutters. So it would oh, like gosh. melt foam the cover. edges. I forgot all about uh, that. That actually was counterintuitive because it actually <laughs> made the edges heavier, which prevented any uh, like flow for yeah. the shape. So use uh, scissors. Not, <laughs> just gonna have to use scissors and be extra careful right. to not fray any of the edges. It will maintain its shape as long as you are right. careful. Use a sharp uh, scissors or shears so yeah. you can get a very nice clean cut. Otherwise, uh, they are just, just gonna have threads right. flying all over the room. And there are threads flying all over a room. We'll, yeah. we'll preface that there. there. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was quite... It was one of those projects where it's like that was the last thing we needed to get right, and it was uh, the last ten percent ended up being like the ninety yeah. percent of like the <laughs> thing itself. But um, but hey, let me talk more about like this thing that we bought. And so if you look carefully, like the material is different. It is kind of a silk, but it's, it's it looks like it's a higher thread it's a higher count. thread count. It's not as opaque as as the stuff we were going. But the cool thing about it is the way attached it is with these uh, Velcro little pieces of Velcro on these tabs. So I, I figured, let me just design a very, very similar tab approach. And I ended up with this, you know, these tabs here that are um, crossed like that. And what ended up working better is a cross bar, which goes across the, ent <laughs> the entire jewel. So what this allows uh, the material to do is it's, it's more taut and it allows it to kind of flutter a little bit more. With this design, um, there's so much room here that it just kind of twists and folds into itself and doesn't really make a good shape. Um, the reason why this works is because, well, it's a bigger battery and it has more air, um, bigger battery, it's a bigger fan, has more airflow, so it's able to push this. So one of the interesting things is it comes with a backup, like a, uh, a uh, what would you call it, a backup? Uh, comes with another set of this stuff, which is great. We were like, oh, well, let's just use that and put it on our, our little thing here. And we did, but it's, because of the shape, it's so long and it's, it's, it weighs a little bit more, it actually just flops like this and doesn't look good. Uh, so that really sucked. <laughs> so we ended up creating our own shapes and, and, and really modifying the design. Uh, again, shout out to Nick Daimler because he shared how he was able to get his flame. And uh, same thing with a, uh, he had a single flame here, but it, was, it had the same concept where it's basically just a bar and the flame uh, is just st stuck uh, to the bar and it's taut across the whole thing. Um, and that's what makes it uh, flutter like that, um, which is what we want to, to, to make this effect. If it sounds like my fan is on, it's actually the computer. <laughs> that was one of the most annoying, annoying things about that. Yeah. <laughs> you're in your, when you're rendering something, you can't tell if it's the fan or the flame torch. It's funny. Um, so, yeah. And it's still a little bit tricky to get you know, you gotta shape your flame if you want it to kind of go right, but there you go. So the material, the shape, and the way it was mounted all played together to make the effect. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're gonna scale this up, you're gonna have to, I guess, change a little bit. But at this small scale, with this particular design, that's what we found worked the best. Um, so yeah, those are a template. We actually have two pieces of it. So you have that thick flame, and then you have these two strips that are a little bit smaller, and that just gives you some more dimension. Uh, so here's a good look at the uh, the crossbar standalone outside of the uh, outside of the torch. Um, we're just using double stick tape. Um, you could use um, a hot glue, I guess. It'd be a little bit more messier. I'd probably not use hot glue. Um, so double stick tape. Nitto tape is great too. That's particularly the type of tape we use. Nitto tape, um, but double scotch would work well. Um, so yeah, that's that's the flame. Very very hard <laughs> to do for us. Okay, um, yeah, let's walk through the wiring, I guess, or is there any questions on the flame? Uh, and just some suggestions on using shears. peaking shears. Ooh, this might work. I don't know, I'm taking a look at the shape of the blade with the 
teeth sort Ooh. of yeah these sort of serrated would, teeth yeah i don't know if that does that would make actually... those weird cuts not weird cuts but those cuts that have uh those sort of so when um, i would so the bags. scissors that i used for this was the super scissors which has something that sort of close teeth, to that yeah. teeth shape near the end and that did not cut good so i, I don't know how that would work unless they're like super good? sharp yeah i had to use like the very tip of our super scissors and it has those yeah right there near the end it would always fray when you got to that end there are these different they're just a different color yeah they're a different color yeah that's funny i was like we have these but they're a different color yeah they can cut all sorts of stuff yeah, that's what we used. Super scissors. Maybe yeah, Rosin is saying that uh, they are designed to resist fraying. Hmm. We'll pick some up. Yeah, definitely, we should definitely pick uh, some up. won't be the last project that involves fabric cutting. Right. Silk, you know, mm -hmm. low thread count silk. Cool, thank you. We, we appreciate good tips on tools and, and things. Added to the cart. Excellent. All right. Um, so the, the wiring section of the guide just walks you through all the little bits of wiring, setting up the slide switch and wiring up uh, a JST connector to the Neo Pixel Jewel, which I'm a fan of because then you can disconnect it. Um, yeah. And then I have another JST connector going on the Gemma end. And I think I said earlier, I like the pins on the Gemma to solder to them because there's like so much room and I can have multiple wires. It's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. So I wired it up that way. Lots of room on those pads. Yeah. I did find something I didn't even tell you about this. I damaged one of our uh, mini boosts. I need to buy more. <laughs> I, I kind of burnt off uh, right here. Do you see the five hole pin? I mm -hmm. added too much solder and like destroyed this cap. Oh. Yeah, I was like, crap. So what I ended up doing is putting a header on it and that made it so much better. So if you are working with your mini boost, do yourself a favor and just add that header because then you can hook it up to a breadboard or because there's just one ground pin, um, it's it's nicer to share the ground pin uh, when you have a header pin like that. There's plenty of surface area to kind of stick to. So that's my tip there on the uh, the mini boost. I messed one up. Uh, the five volt fan comes pre wired, but I put some silicone uh, ribbon cables on on it uh, just because it it works better. I think in my opinion, I don't like the PVC uh, melting on my wires, so I like to use the silicone covered ones. So the, fi the fan is, is wired up to the, the mini boost, and here's a shot of that. Um, yep, the header pin definitely saved the day on that. Um, so yeah, once that's wired up and uh, you hook up, plug in the JST connectors and plug in the battery to the slide switch adapter and you can test it. Uh, when you're testing, be careful <laughs> with the fan. It's gonna, it, it does pump out some nice airflow. So I had it on the desk and it was like moving away from the desk and you could damage the blades and then you're down apart. So please be careful with your fan. Make sure that if, it, if, if you have it laid down, that the grill is uh, protecting your, your blade, uh, your fan blades. Ah, I got lucky and I didn't damage it, so that's nice. There is a built-in on-off switch on the Gemma. Uh, so just make sure that it's always on the on position because the slide switch adapter isn't hooked up to enable pin. It's just cutting the voltage line from your battery. Um, without having to cut your actual battery, which is nice. You want to let Rufio in? He keeps scratching at the door. All right. All right, and then the assembly is the last page. It's our favorite page. Uh, there's some two screws that get uh, added. There's two mounting holes on the jewel, which is a great way to mount a PCB to a thing. Uh, so those are great. They're M2, M25 sized, so I'm using some hex nuts to keep it in there. Um, yep, there's a built-in slide switch holder for the slide switch. Um, it's a part of the gem amount, which I liked that it's all kind of contained there. And then the, uh, the mini boost is mounted with a single uh, screw and a hex nut. Um, it just has one mounting hole, but it works really well here. It's a small board. So I, I have this kind of little tab that, uh, that it can fit onto. So that's uh, how you secure it with a single nut and, uh, and a screw. All right, uh, the gem amount is mounted <laughs> to the mount um, with no hardware. There's these little nubs on the side that will keep the PCB from falling out. So you just kind of have to flex um, the, the mount open so that you can get the, the edges of the PCB to snap into those little nubs on the edge. Um, and that keeps the, the Gemma nicely secured. There are some little cutouts that allow you to uh, plug in the JST battery and a micro USB cable. That's really nice. Without those cutouts, you wouldn't be able to access them. So, engineering. 
All right, and then uh, once our gem is installed, it's, it's time to kind of start installing everything, mounting it to the cage or the torch part of the torch. Uh, the gem mount gets uh, mounted to the bottom of this thing. There's four tabs that are built into the cage and um, we're using these long screws. These are 30 millimeter long M3 screws. There's just four of them. And then like, I think like 12 hex nuts, quite a few tech hex nuts, but you'll see why. So the gem mount gets mounted to the tabs on the torch. You uh, use those screws and then you use hex nuts to uh, fasten from the top of the torch uh, to, to secure the gem mount to the top of the torch. And then because the screws are so long, you can just fit the fan onto those screw threads and then add more hex nuts, <laughs> four more. And then you can tighten that down. And then on top of your fan, quick note, make sure that the fan airflow is oriented correctly. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's going to be sucking in yeah. fan. So just make sure, reference the photo. There's a little label there that, that means up. And anyway, uh, on top of the fan is the NeoPixel Jewel that gets mounted on top. And then you can, there's plenty of, of uh, kind of openings on the side uh, to allow that JST connector to kind of slide through. So I, mean, I have this photo here showing the JST connector poking through the other end there. And the next shot shows uh, the NeoPixel Jewel holder mounted right on top of that fan. Because the screws are 30 millimeters long, there's enough of a screw. Uh, to, to pluck that down in there. And then guess what? More hex nuts. <laughs> Four more hex nuts. Ties that down. Uh, and then um, you can connect the, uh, the NeoPixel Jewel to the Gemma via that JST connector. See, this is why I like JST connectors. Otherwise, you would have had to have done it in a particular order. So, yeah. Uh, what's the next one? <laughs> uh, plug in, the, bat, uh, plug in the, the slide switch if you hadn't done so. That's what's showing on here. And the last kind of bit is the flame crossbar. That gets fitted right on top of that jewel. Um, there's a little bit of, of screw left, and that's just enough for those built-in standoffs on the crossbar to fit into. And uh, that's kind of it. It's easy to take out the, uh, what do you call it, the, um, <laughs> the crossbar. crossbar which was really helpful for us because we kept swapping out different ones, trying yeah. to figure out what... That's actually why it was designed that that's way. Why, that's <laughs> why. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. But anyway, uh, you can test the, fl the, the flame uh, once you have that main piece. That really is the core piece of the project. Everything else is just a handle and a, a nice way to, to hide the battery. It kind of makes it portable. Yeah, so then we, uh, we plug in the battery uh, to the slide switch JC adapter because poking out through the bottom. We fit it through the bottom of the cage, and then we just squeeze those two together, line up those fingers and snap them together. That was covered in the 3D printing part. And then uh, once that's together, you can start fitting in the, uh, uh, the thread. Here's a little note. The parts are threaded for righty tidy, lefty loosey. You have full control over how you want that in Fusion, but I, I like to stick with uh, kind of the standard uh, coil. Yeah. All right, um, and then we, uh, we just screw on the things. That's it. Fueling the flame. It looks, it looks really nice when you're moving it around and mm -hmm. it's in motion while it's in the light. Um, if, it's a, if there's a breeze, it, it, it interacts with the breeze. The, uh, if you go to the overhead, you can see just a slight breeze. Uh, get those going into oh, that's action. That's funny. That's literally what's going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We got some cool. comments on whether we think the rainbow cellophane that Aaron St. Blaine uses, uses in her projects would help with this. I don't believe so. What if the using the cellophane um, to act as the flame, I'm guessing, if, if melted, the, if the if melting the edges made it too heavy, uh, maybe worth a test. But yeah. like I was saying earlier, just melting the edges on this made it too heavy to actually. Uh, have any believable airflow or any like motion on it that was mm -hmm. nice yeah so I, we I are know. we're like on the border of like that fan just isn't powerful enough to mm -hmm. to really make that movement so we got lucky with uh with this fan and this material um where it works yeah, well you definitely need it to be uh, I don't know what the word is for the way that the threads are for just the, the low count thread. Yeah, very transparent, air to very flutter uh, through and to actually move it around. Um, yeah. Let's see. 
So let's uh, assemble it back together now. What's cool about this, like you can you can flip this around, it doesn't matter. There's just a bigger flange here. So just fit that there. That fits in nicely. Righty tighty, lefty loose. Get that nice and tight. If you are interested in like how to design these coils, I have a little Lair Belair tutorial. We got a playlist that we tend to link in all the videos, so you can check that out. It, it, there's also another one that covers like how to get um, designs to match up, um, so kind of doing some offsets in your tolerances. Uh, cool note about this uh, knurling effect here on the uh, on the handle. Uh, I use the emboss feature. Uh, I've, been, I've been itching to use that. I used it a couple times. Um, but here, it's it's a, a great way to kind of add some, not just detail, but like actual functionality, like a, a good grip to whatever you're designing. Um, and the emboss tool made it so much easier than having to set up coils and sweeps and figuring out the circular pattern for this. Um, so that was really nice to, to, to use the emboss feature on the handle. I also used it to create these holes here. Um, the emboss feature does a really good job of... Uh, of uh, cutting and, and adding embosses or debosses or cutouts in this case uh, to to tapered uh, surfaces and, and and in this case it's a spline curve so that's nice. Place where I did drop one of these, I ended up breaking one. <laughs> I've been breaking one of these things off, so I printed another one because I glued it on and then you know didn't look that great. But yeah, I figured this piece would break first, but now that was this piece, so. And if you guys want to build your own, modify, all the files are available so you can change the scaling, right. change any of the graphics. There is lots of modifications in terms of being able to modify this for whatever particular prop that you're working yeah. on. Also, big shout out to Nick Daimler for this. This is his fault, really. <laughs> he shared this on Prusa uh, printer site, and I was like, this is so cool. I did print it out, and I tried to scale it down for our fan, um, but I ran into some issues. Um, and I just figured, let me, let me just recreate this thing in Fusion. Uh, but this is great. If you wanted to use a bigger fan, just use Nick's design. He's using a bigger LED here too. The, the, I think this is the 16 or maybe the 24 NeoPixel ring. Definitely a bigger fan. And uh, yeah, and check out his Twitter too. He's got a good uh, kind of video of it in action with the actual fan, uh, with the actual uh, flame. But yeah, good stuff. All right, and that is this week's project. Go. Oh, awesome. Yay. Let's see, what else we got? <laughs> I'm going to over in all the of room. the comments. Everybody likes. Suggestions on uh, the shears are very helpful. I'll try those out. Let's go ahead and jump into this week's what are we prototyping? Yeah, good, good. Which one do we do first? Uh, well, I got just this stuff, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah so uh, really cool upcoming segment over onto John Park's workshop is going to be looking at all of the 50, I'm sure there's going to be more, of these STEM uh, boards that uh, Lamar has been pumping out. Uh, Lamar and Brian and the team works on all the awesome PCB products. So, so John cool. needed a really cool way to uh, display these, and he had the idea of coming up with this nice little uh, tabbed peg format here. So these go onto a pegboard, and then you have these nice little um, standoff connectors, so it will fit all the different varied sizes of the Stemma board. So our favorite one here, the MLX, a little uh, thermal camera uh, viewer. Mm -hmm. And there's a bunch of different odd sizes, like the, uh, the, the little o OLED, OLED. Yeah. OLED ones. And then I grabbed all the other ones. Yeah, there's even... There's a few accelerometers. Here. There's a PM There's so mic, many. There's showed. 50 of them. There's 50 <laughs> boards. So I wish there was a list. Some sort of awesome Some sort of awesome list. list. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. Oh, wait. Here it is. There's the awesome list. GitHub.com slash Adafruit slash awesome dash demo. This covers um, all of the, the boards. Um, and it, it has a good category. So like the, the actual dev boards, like the Pi Portal, the Pi Badge, the Edge Badge, the Badge Badge. The Badger badge. <laughs> you have badger all badge. the sensors, so every sensor is right here, and it has a nice little table view. Add-on sensors with a stomach connector. You're looking at TFT gizmos, e-ink gizmos, color TFT bonnets. Uh, we have Adafruit devices like the soil sensor, the Neo Trellis RGB driver. It just goes on and on. Potentiometer, digital potentiometers. 
displays that are Stemma, processors to Stemma, Groove, Quick Boards, so kind of like conversion boards, all listed here, very, very nice. Here's all the cables as well. So if you want to uh, integrate the Stemma connector into your designs, uh, we, uh, we urge you to. Urge you to something. We recommend you do uh, something like that. Yeah, I mean, there's that a bunch of different uh, converters. Like if you have a Grove connector, you can convert it over to a uh, Stemma QT or mm -hmm. just regular Stemma. Yeah, and the, and the folks that make Stemma, the, the JST PH and SH, they have 3D models of it, which we use in our designs. Mm -hmm. So that's a great way to, um, to get that in your PCB. Um, yeah, so these are all, all the lists. I'll put that in the Discord chat room if it's not already. Zynga. And then we also have a category on the Adafruit shop. So category uh, 1005 has three different subcategories, devices, sensors, controllers, cables, and connectors. Uh, so you can get a good look here of all the things that are actually in stock and uh, a good visual of what all the things do. Yeah. We have an EEPROM breakout? I didn't know that. I think that was a was week or two ago. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, shout out to uh, C CET on the YouTube chat Hello. saying they converted all of their sensors for Stemma. That's awesome. And they'd like one of each. <laughs> there's so many. There's, there's. The table many. is just full of all of these. We've been actually uh, saving these up to do a project, a little overview video on these. For sure. Just kind of give an overview, yeah. Reaching 50 sounds like it's a good. Uh, good time to start on that. So we'll probably be working on that next week. Yeah, that'll like a little be next break week's on uh, little projects. Project, yeah. Well, as we ramp up, we got some bigger ones that we're working on. We got some fairy wings and some more Actually, boxes. Yeah, if you want to go ahead and show some of the CAD work for that. I would, but uh, I don't think we got I eight got minutes it. left. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and jump into this week's community makes, though. Sure. This week, continuing the kicking off of Halloween, which According to the department stores, started it's like started two weeks ago. Weeks ago. <laughs> oh. This week, it is this really awesome little tea light holder, a skeleton tea light holder. He's it's growing cool. out of the burner. <laughs> so this is using the glow-in-the-dark filament. Kind of hard to tell there. This is by Benjamin Lane. And in the description to this post, it looks like it was a 3D scan of a model that is no longer available. So that's so cool that you're able to preserve Interesting. such a cool little shape. And he lists it as a candle holder, but a tea light holder fits just as well. You can see there's some of the little green glow from the Clifab uh, PLA PHA filament that we have in the shop. Pick some up just in time for Halloween. We also have the Ninja Flex version of this. So you can get some flexible glow-in-the-dark projects going on. This is really nicely detailed. I really like, uh, I don't think he lists which type of scanner that he used to get all this, but it's pretty high quality in high terms of, high, yeah, the high polycon on it. Mm -hmm. So excellent little, uh, little tea holder there. And if you jump into the posting for this, there is some sure. really nice post-processing that was done to get that nice little grungy look on it. So you can definitely use it to get some of your paint skills in. You can see there he printed it out in like a gray type of filament or a brownish mm -hmm. tan filament and then uh, made it into a nice uh -oh. uh, little grungy cool. weathered effect. Yeah, I like it. Typical. Awesome. Oh look, it's holding oh, up wow, some yeah. little knickknacks here. Huh. Excellent. A nice well. egg holder for her Easter. <laughs> yep, so standard uh, printing settings for this, just two millimeter for the layer height, uh, no supports, and I think it was like 10% for the infill, very low infill since it uh, doesn't need so much. Sweet. Super cool little All right. display for Halloween. Yeah, I like it. Excellent. All right, that is uh, going to be posted on 3D Thursday tomorrow on the blog. Of course, check in on the Adafruit blog every Thursday for more 3D printed projects from the community and beyond. And I'll post a link to that in the chats. Thank you, Seth. Yeah, uh, Liz just said uh, her, the Stemma speaker is her favorite. It's actually my favorite, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, when she made that one, I was like, yes, Lamar. Uh, 
made that one. So finally, an easy way to add like audio speaker mm -hmm. to any project. I'm just gonna make sure that these uh, that there is one for it. I think it has the same. Mm. Uh, there's the point. No, I think it's completely, mm. completely okay. different. But we got a 3D model of it with all the pre-populated parts. So mm -hmm. you'll get those. Uh, we'll get that bracket whipped up. Okay. Well, thanks, folks, in the chat room for hanging out with us. Uh, we had quite a fun time in the morning. If you missed it, good. <laughs> <laughs> you might be able to see it in the replay of this. Maybe. So quick programming note, it's Wednesday. We do the show every Wednesday at 11 AM. So if you'd like to join, join in live, uh, that's the time slot. Tomorrow is John Park's uh, workshop at um, 4 PM Eastern time. Check it with John. I kind of skipped a little bit ahead because there's more show. It's Wednesday. On Wednesdays, we have back-to-back -back shows. We have uh, uh, the show and tell, which is a great way to uh, share your projects with the community and folks from Adafruit. That's right, full hour of show and tell, so you can show off anything that you're working on, any projects, any upcoming uh, little cool retro tech that you want to show off, or if you just want Work in to progress. Uh, do a little tour of your makerspace or any projects that your kids are working on, everything is welcome. Definitely hang out right at 7 p.m. so you can test out your mic. We'll post the link in the Discord at discord.gg slash if you want to join in. Yes. And if the slots are busy, stick around as uh, people show off the project, they jump off and slots become open. So you can join then. You have an old, a whole hour. So just be patient. And then right after that, we have a full hour of Ask an Engineer with Phil and Lamar, all the cool things going on at Idfruit, all the top secret projects that are being worked on. Products. And products. Yeah. Every week. Cool. And at the end of the show, awesome video series uh, from Catney. Yes. Python hardware. So check all it out. All of the updates, all the new hardware, all the new code being contributed to CircuitPython. Don't want to miss out on that. Also on 9, 9 September 9th, it's going to be the sneakiest, sneakiest day, day yeah. of the year, Circuit Python Day. There's going to be a Spanish show and tell. Wow. Uh, forget what timing that is for. I think it's like at 11 a.m. is what Katney said. Definitely stay tuned as the date gets closer for all of the schedule events happening. happening. Circuit Python Day. It's going to be a lot of collaboration, some uh, awesome streaming, live streaming. And yeah. showing off a bunch of cool hardware. Sweet. And the last one we got from the desk of Lady Ada happening every Sunday. Yeah. Uh, heading up a new series with DigiKey, The Great Search. So you can check that out every Sunday at around like 8 to 9 p.m. Tends to happen at that time slot. Um, really nice to see Lamar um, doing the, the desk. <laughs> doing the desk. Showing her, her work and, and giving us tips on how to use the DigiKey site. Fun times. All right, that's gonna do it for the show. We did it. We made it Yay. to the finish line. I have a torch here. I'll pass you the torch. You do next week's project. There you go. It's gonna be it for this episode, guys. That's it. Thank <laughs> you so much, folks. Again, we'll see you later tonight. We hope to see you on the show and tell and inspire other folks as, as, uh, as you do. <laughs> right. With that, don't forget, forget to, to make, make a, great, a day. great day. See you later, time, folks. Flame the fire. Bye. <laughs> Where's the camera? <laughs> it's right there. All right. Bye bye.